If you build a home, a tent, a log cabin, it does not matter. If there is no structure, it is going to topple to the ground. You can't put up a dwelling of any sort without infrastructure. I'm gonna show you why your website, because it is your online home, is no different. It must have a legal infrastructure or it will also topple to the ground. Now, the trigger for when this information is important to you is going to happen when you are buying a domain name, building a website, setting up a landing page, getting ready to do Facebook ads. If you find yourself doing any of those triggers, then this information matters to you and you need to pay attention. First step privacy policy. You, like I, hear this word tossed around all the time. Basically, your privacy policy is tell the truth and the whole truth about what you are doing when you collect information from people that are doing business with you or that you hope will do business with you. To me, this is basic good manners in your privacy policy, and it really needs to be termed data privacy because we are collecting so many pieces of information, different pieces of information, but as the world is getting more and more focused and hyper, hyper online with the recent release of so many AI tools, it is going to be very, very important that you know where you're keeping it, who has information to it, what you're collecting, how it is stored. All of those pieces are really important. They are infrastructure. They are under the hood, behind the walls. Nobody really sees them until they're not there. So you want to make sure that First and foremost, you have your privacy policy that you understand what is in it. And if you're anything like me, you trust the tools that you purchase from. There's many, many tools I use in my business that have to collect information from you that I might not necessarily know where it is going, okay? There are times that Google doesn't know where Google stuff goes. So that is not a deal breaker, but it is imperative to my business that I am choosing tools that I trust in my business that I know, yep, that information is going over there. And as you'll see a little bit later in the video when we get to cookies, why it's really important to choose something that says, hey, you are collecting this information, you are using it, even if you might not know it on what we'll call the face of your business. Now, the terms for your website, this is what I like to call the playground rules. They are coming into our websites, our opt-in pages. Those are pieces of our business and metaphorically speaking, it's no different than a playground. When you come to my playground, this is how you are going to behave. This is how you're going to use the equipment. Those are pieces that are going to show up in your legal terms. So just like you wouldn't want to just let loose a whole bunch of strangers into, let's say you had a nice playground in your backyard, then you don't want to be doing that with your actual website. So your terms are going to identify who you are as a legal entity, the relationship between you and people that are, we'll say at the outer periphery of your business. It's going to cover intellectual property. It's also going to cover if there is some kind of a dispute, where are we going to talk about that if a legal setting is ever required? Metaphorically speaking, you don't want to have to defend yourself or take part in legal proceedings in Timbuktu. You want them to stay on your home turf. So your website terms are your playground rules. A lot of them, yes, are dictated by the law. 
Let's take a look at things that are in sample terms. These again are playground rules. So they're telling you not just how to use the site, but the stuff that's on the site, who owns it? Where does it belong? What do you get to do with stuff that you find on a site? Now, this is where, and I will reiterate it again, it is really important to not just copy and paste because you're like, oh, I bet that person's smart. I think I'm going to use their terms because stuff gets customized all the time and you don't want more liability and you also don't want less coverage. So as you can see, it is limiting. This is what I'm responsible for since I invited you onto my playground. However, I'm not responsible for if you do X or Y or Z. So for instance, when I'm taking kids to the playground, it might say play at your own risk or this equipment is for ages five to 12. This, this equipment is for ages 12 and older. Those are lim ways that the playground is limiting their liability. Now, if I still go and play with that, yes, I'm taking on the risk. So your terms are your playground rules and also an incredibly important part of your legal infrastructure for your website. Now, as we're going through, if you have any questions that pop up, please ask me in the comments. I love being able to answer specific questions. And sometimes a lot of people will be like, do I really have to have this? And instead of using big, scary things, I like to keep it very practical. This is the practicality of if X or Y or Z were to happen. So. Feel free at any point, just ask me a question in the comments below. Okay, we're going to dive into the next two parts of your legal infrastructure for your website, and that is disclaimers and disclosures. So I want to make sure that it is very clear they sound similar. They live together very often, but they do serve two different parts as they are supporting the website and providing infrastructure. So a legal disclaimer is like a warning that tells people that you're not responsible if something goes wrong when they use your website. A disclosure is when you tell people about something important or secret that they should know. Now, there is a lot of what I'll call overlap between these two because sometimes we'll use an affiliate relationship. For instance, you are saying affiliate disclaimer, hey, if you use this product, I'm not responsible if it doesn't work for you the way that it did for me. You also are affiliate disclosing, hey, I have a relationship with this company. If you decide to try out their product, then yes, they'll probably send me some kind of a thank you gift, doesn't cost you any extra. So it's one that online business owners are very familiar with, but we often are like, well, it's kind of over here and it's kind of over there. It's okay to put it in both spots. It absolutely is. You're not gonna get in trouble for being like, oh, whoops, it was supposed to be a disclosure and I dumped it into disclaimers or vice versa. Time for cookies. No, not that kind of cookie, which I know is the most easily referenced illustration, graphic, whatever, whatever you have it, when it comes to talking about cookies on your website. Now, cookies are breadcrumbs. They are little snippets, little pixels that say, hey, you were here. Now, I am not a techie, so I'm going to give you my real person living and dwelling in online business world. Cookies just sometimes make my life easier, sometimes allow me to track different things that I wouldn't otherwise be able to. I know cookies do a million different things. So for all of you tech people, I'm thrilled that you understand it for the running of my business so that I don't collapse my infrastructure. I have to have 
a cookie policy and I have to tell people what cookies it is that I'm using. Now, this is where I had no idea the amount of cookies that were on my website until I started using a tool called CookieBot. Now, there are other tools that are out there and I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna show you why I switched to this kind of tool and why you might want to think about doing so for your own website and your own business. So before I was using the tool that I use, which is called CookieBot, I was like, oh, I use Google Analytics, I have the Facebook pixel turned on, and I was like, I'm not really tracking anything else. Well, unbeknownst to me, and this is the cookie policy that's on my website, you can go check it out anytime you want, this is all of the cookies that show up on my site based on using Kajabi, using Video Ask, using um, Elf Site Widget plugins, like some of my tools, I didn't realize, oh my goodness, look at all the different cookies that are on my website. Now, this, I could never, never in a gazillion years could I keep up with, we're still scrolling by the way, all the cookies that are on my site because all those tools that we all use, they're always making updates, they're always working in their businesses. Most of them have very large teams of thousands of people. We're going to miss it. So this is why you have to tell people what you're doing and unless you wanna be in the business of like keeping track of all this stuff, like there's no way, uh uh-uh, wouldn't want to do it. That is the cookie policy. So you have to have a cookie policy and you have to tell people what cookies are on the site. I could never begin to. Now, there's also quite a robust discussion um, in terms of, well, if I use a tool like CookieBot, my site looks ugly. We're not talking about ugly sites, we're talking about the law. There are times that stuff will be ugly. Guess what, it's ugly for a reason. It needs to stand out. So legal, I've said in other videos, if you've been in my world, you've heard me, you've heard me say this. Legal is very often cleanup crew. It is the coming around and cleaning up the mess that was inadvertently made by business, because business moves lightning fast, absolutely lightning fast. The law is a little bit slower. It's usually coming behind cleaning up those unintended consequences. So if you are like, yeah, I just don't want it. I don't want to do that right now. Okay, you've heard it. You know where the information is when you decide to take action. Yes, it's required by law. However, I get that some of you just want the really pretty cookie notifications. Um, I might, I'm not going to agree with you on that point because there are ripplings in the underworld. And for those of you that have been around long enough, you know that there were some really schmarmy practices with letting people download images for their blogs, and this would have been 2011 to 13 ish. And then about six months later, you started getting these demand letters for $25,000 for the unauthorized use of that photo, $50,000 for the unauthorized use of those photos. Not naming what was going on, but for those of you that have been around, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, there is kind of an undercurrent going along the interwebs with cookies in terms of I, if I'm an, un, I'm going to call it unethical because I think it is very schmarmy. I pop into a Facebook group. I work for whatever kind of company you want to make this. I pop in and I just start looking at all the people in the Facebook group. I pop over to their website and I look, do they have what's required by law? And what's required by law is see these different classifications, unclassified, um, marketing necessary, what are the other, they, marketing is 32, um, statistics, preferences, and necessary. So 
the necessary ones, my site won't run if you don't accept the necessary cookies. So that categorization is what is required by law. I'm actually, I will make a whole separate video going into the nuances, but I think it's really important while I have your attention to say, I can go into a group, I can pull up your website. Yep, you're not you're not doing what the law says. I can write a very scary letter to be on the receiving end of. When you get that letter, you panic. You're like, "Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I got to do it. I got to do it. Oh my gosh, they're going to they're going to take everything away. I'm like I screwed it all up." And a lot of you will send them money because you believe them because you are an ethical person who would never dream of doing that to people. Trust me, it happens all the time. Drives me insane when it happens, but it happens. So to me, this is a very, 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 very cheap insurance policy that one, gets the task off my to-do list because it is done. And two, someone can pop to my website and be like, oh, she's got it, and they move on. So even if... I was right. Let's say I had stuff on there and they still accused me. I still have to defend. I still have to jump through the hoops. I still have to figure out, is this for real? Is this not for real? Do it, does it matter? Does it not matter? Um, that's a lot of time, money, and effort. So cookies are, they are important. You have to pay attention to them. There are many, many tools. AppSumo runs deals all the time um, on cookie, um, tracking tools, cookie consent tools, but whatever you have, you want to make sure you've got your policy on your site and you also have the detailed list, um, which again, CookiePot does this for me. You can just see it was just done on March 26 of this year. So this is the part that this is an employee of my company. CookieBot is an employee. Their only job is to make sure that they track all the cookies and I will gladly pay them. I believe it's roughly $120 a year, something like that. I don't know about you, but there's not a lot of people I can hire to work for my business all the time for $120 a year. So that's it. My soapbox about cookies got a little bit longer than I meant for it to, but it's really important and it's one that I know gets glossed over all the time and I don't want any infrastructures of websites collapsing. All right, enough on cookies. Now I'm going to walk you through the Digital Millennium Copyright Act notice, or abbreviated very often as DMCA. Now, this is far more relevant and important if you have other people posting content onto anything that is part of your website landing pages, blog articles, videos, snippets of videos, whatever the case may be, you are now mixing other people's copyright because that's what governs our ideas, the content by and large. I'm giving very general descriptions, so um, we're painting in broad strokes. But if I take someone else's blog article and I put it on my site, how do I know that that person wrote that article? It's not plagiarized. It's not stolen. It's not, um, you know, committing defamation. It's not libel. All of those issues will bubble up when I let other people come in. Now, the Copyright Notice Act, this one, this basically gives you a safe harbor in terms of if for instance, someone stole one of my videos, claimed it as their own, and gave it to another website owner, I would be like, mm, I'm going to go to their website. I'm going to see if they have a DMCA notice, which tells me exactly where to, here it is right here, notice of the claim. I'm claiming that content is mine. This is what I need to do, what I need to provide, and also where I need to send it. So the DMCA handles that part, and it also lets you know if you're sending this to me, what can you expect? So the DMCA notice is so that someone can say, hey, 
that's my stuff. You need to get it off your site. And again, definitely, definitely comes into play if you have a robust guest um, contributor portion of your business model of your website because, and this was far more prevalent from like 2012 to 2015 in my own experience where people wanted to be featured as a guest blogger and so they were stealing content. Now we've got all of the AI tools, people have expanded onto different avenues, but the legal requirement of the DMCA notice is still here, it is still valid, and this is what it does and the role that it plays in your legal infrastructure on your own website. All right, testimonials. This is an area that so many of us use on our own website. In fact, as I was making this video, it was a very good reminder that my own page needs an update. So I am gonna hand off that task very, very shortly. So when you're working with testimonials, this is another instance of tell the truth, tell the whole truth, do not make things up. Do not exaggerate claims. So that is one part of the equation is we're telling the truth. The second part is making sure that you have permission from the people whose testimonial you are using for various reasons that can are far, far outside the scope of using a testimonial. There are real situations where people do not want their name blasted all over your site or their picture or their company name or their, lo um, their logo, their um, location, their words. There could be a variety of reasons. So when you're using testimonials, make sure that you have obtained consent to use that testimonial. Now, this can be as simple as I could shoot, you know, someone posted something great about me in, let's say, the official Kajabi user group. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Can I use that? One, I don't own the official Kajabi user group. Two, they posted it in a private community. And three, I would want someone to ask my permission before they start grabbing screenshots and throwing them all over the place. So a quick email, a quick DM can serve as consent. Hey, you posted this. Do I have your permission to now post it on my website, to now load it into my social media um, smarter queue? Do I have permission to use it and you can outline the reasons. Um, it does not have to be specific. It can also be something very formal or more formal-esque in terms of they finished your course, they've gone through part of your membership, and you're having them complete, let's say it's a Google form, it's embedded, and you're they're answering questions in terms of their feedback. Part of that can be turned into a testimonial. So testimonials, two parts, Tell the truth, the whole truth. Do not exaggerate the truth. And the second part, make sure you have permission. Now, I know the questions are going to pop up. They always do. What if it's in my group? What if it's on, you know, my forum? What if it's over? I cover all of that when we're talking about purchase terms and how important those are. So preview to coming attractions you can get permission at the outset from within your company. So within my realm, when anyone buys anything from me, there is part of the purchase terms that they agree to before they buy that says, I can use your name, I can use your likeness, I can use your words. Now, I like to treat people the way that I appreciate being treated, and so I ask for permission but technically my purchase terms have covered the legal portion and the legal infrastructure piece. All right, now this is gonna be a very broad stroke governing ADA compliance, which stands for Americans with Disabilities Act. Now, this is becoming more and more a forefront issue because it has to do with accessibility. And just like we wouldn't wanna build this amazing 
retail location with beautiful interiors and incredible products and all of this amazing stuff and put a staircase of really steep stairs, you know, 20 feet up into the air with like no handrails, it would be really inaccessible for a lot of people. So accessibility has to do with so many features. Again, not we're painting in broad strokes here, but when you are running your website, and this is an area I am working on my own as we speak, little bite-sized chunk by bite-sized chunk by bite-sized chunk. Thankfully, there are lots of tools that have now come on the market that have made it easy for those of us that are not coders, that are not developers, that are have no idea how to program things, that we can hire them, just like I hired CookieBot, to say, hey, could you, you know, with the click of a button, those magical clicks of a button, make my site readable for someone who is colorblind? Make my site audible in these areas. Make the contrast. So ADA is dealing with accessibility. It is important. It is very um, much getting lots of legal attention. There are firms that are now devoting entire departments to dealing with ADA compliance, both in terms of suing people for it and also defending people for it. So make sure that ADA compliance is on your radar. I will be doing a few videos on this topic coming up. So if you want to make sure that you're on the inside of my world, you can scan the code for this video, which will unlock checklists, bonus material, the whole nine yards, but you'll also be notified, hey, I'm talking about ADA compliance. This is what I'm going into, um, which you can do by simply subscribing to my channel. So thank you, enjoy your day. I will see you on the next video.